Hi everybody. Uh, so last video in this uh, logger pro uh, and graphing series, um, we talked about how to make the line of best fit and also how to linearize your data. And we looked at the simplest way to do that. Now the thing is, is that gave us dots that were very close together down near the origin, but very far apart uh, near the other edges. And you'll actually see that a lot. It might be that they're closer together up near the, uh, the sort of top uh, right-hand side of your graph. But either way, they seem to always get clustered. So we're going to see another way that we can do this that will um, will avoid that clustering. It's trickier, uh, but it I think it works. It actually ends up working quite well. Uh, so here we go. Now we had x and y, right? We know our relationship is x is proportional to 1 over, or sorry, y is proportional to 1 over x squared. Well, that also means that 1 over root y is proportional to x, right? Basically, what I can do is if I square root both sides, I get root y is proportional to 1 over x, and if I uh, inverse both sides again, I get 1 over root y is proportional to x. So I'm going to try making 1 over root y. I'm going to move this over a little bit again. There we go. I'm going to try 1 over uh, y. Okay. Now, this time I am actually going to do this whole thing because I want to find the highest and the lowest possible results of this because that's going to help me get my uncertainties. So I am going to do it in here. I will make a calculated column elsewhere, but I'm going to do this here. And for the moment, I'm going to pause this, uh, pause my recording so I can do all these calculations. Well, you know, what? let me show you how to do the calculation first and then I'll uh, speed up the rest. So I want 1 over root y. Oops. 1 divided by sqrt of that number. So there's the formula using 1 divided by square root. That's a, a function Excel or um, Google Sheets has, Excel would have it as well, of b2, that's the y value right there, enter, there's the first one. Now, the highest possible value, I want to get the highest possible result based on the uncertainty. I know the uncertainty is plus minus 0.01, right? This is down to uh, two decimal places, so the, I'm only going to say the uncertainty is 0 0.01. Actually, no, sorry, I had said it's 0 0.05. We'll, uh, we'll leave it there. So, I want to get the highest possible value. So let me actually change this up a little bit. I'm going to move this over to the other side. And move these ones here. And I'm going to make an equation that will give me the high and the low values for these ones. Y is the value. To get the highest possible Y based on the uncertainty, I add that uncertainty 0.05. And I'm going to copy this down. Then, for the lowest uncertainty, I want that y value minus 0.05, minus the uncertainty. That is the highest and the lowest possible values for y. And then, give myself some room again. We've got 1 over square root of y. So I want to use the same formula, the same basic formula, 1 over square root e2. And I want to use whichever value is going to give me the highest or the lowest possible value. So I'm going to just actually just check between the high and the low which one gives me the highest value. So let's see what happens with C. 0 0.315, that's uh, actually too low. So I'm going to get the next one. Yeah, that's bigger. So that'll be our high value. Oh, and then for the low value, I'm going to use the one from C. There you go. Here's the highest value using the low, the highest possible value actually uses the lowest possible y value, which makes sense because you're on the bottom of a fraction. And the lowest possible value uses the highest possible um, y value. So these are all fine, and I'm going to drag them down to get all the possible values. And I'm also going to find the actual uncertainty. 
Now, the uncertainty is actually half the difference between the high and low value. High minus low, divide by 2. Drag that down. All right, now this, so these are our uncertainties. They're all changing, and I'm going to put these in to my, um, I'm going to put these into my, uh, to my data, uh, but I'm going to pause this while I do that so you don't have to watch me just type in a bunch of stuff. Okay, and the data is all in. I've uh, made my calculated column here in green, uh, y, uh, to, y to the power of negative 0.5, you know, uh, y, uh, which is essentially 1 over root y. And then we've got the uncertainty in the linearized y, which I copied in directly. So I'm going to change up stuff down here. I'm going to have this be x. I'm going to have this be away from here. I'm going to have this be inverse root y. And oh, I forgot to add the last thing, which is the uncertainty, or the error bars rather, fixed values using the column. Uh, uncertainty in linear as y, done. So now we've got our error bars. I'm going to adjust this, let's see, auto scale it. Adjust it a little bit to just give myself a little bit more visual on those things. Okay. And yeah, okay, so we've got our error bars, which is great. We've got our linearized thing. We're going to do a linear fit. Try the fit. 0.997. Yeah, not bad. It's going a little bit off on that first. Uh, First one there. And now I can try to make, so now I've got a linearized graph and I've got my slope and my y-intercept and it should be all good. So there's only one other thing I need to do and that's to find the uncertainty in the slope. And what you're doing with this is you are trying to get, uh, to find the uncertainty in the slope, really what you're trying to do is make the a line that goes through the error bars, or most all the error bars, but is as uh, has as high a slope as possible, and another one that goes through all the error bars, for the most part, and has a slope that is as low as possible. Now it's going to be tricky with this one because I got some big error bars over here, but very small ones down here. The way you do this is by creating some manual fit lines, and that's what I'm going to do here. I've got a manual fit line. The thing about a manual fit line is you can, that's odd. The thing about a manual fit line is you can design it to have line drag. That's this one down here. Now I'm going to change up the appearance because I don't want all my lines to look the same. Uh, I want the color to, uh, take off this color thing. I'm going to make the color of this one be, let's say, red. All right, now I just changed something to make it draggable, line drag. So I can move these points here to try to drag the slope up or down from either end. And I can also drag this thing, to drag everything up and down. Right, now I'm kidding my thing. I'm going to try making the maximum slope that I can. Now, a lot of this is just flat out eyeballing it, just taking a look at what the, uh, what the line could possibly do. I'm just trying to do my best with eyeballing it. It's not going to be perfect, uh, but it's as long as it's decent, that's good enough uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, all right, now I'm missing some of the points down on the bottom end. They have very small uh, error bars, so they're pretty hard. Uh, they're, they're pretty hard to get right on there. But I've come pretty close to most of them. Let me just adjust this up a little bit, and maybe that'll make it a little better. Uh, I don't know. Let's try dragging this down a little bit, and this up a little bit, and I think that's decent. It's just outside of those error bars, which is not too bad. Okay, and that gives me the highest. Yeah, so that I'm going to say that that's done, and that's going to be the highest slope that I can manage. So uh, what I'm going to do now is make another error bar, and I'll do this off screen. I'll do. I'll pause this uh, recording, make another one, and I'll show you the lowest slope uh, value. Be right back. 
All right, so now I've got my high and low slope lines. I have the high slope in red, the low slope in blue, in the middle in black is my uh, linear fit. And with these two slopes, uh, what, I can, what I'll need to do is find half the difference between them. So I would add them, or I would uh, subtract them, uh, then divide that by two, and I'd end up with the uncertainty in my slope. Now, I also have this uncertainty. Now, you might be asking, well, I've already got an uncertainty in the slope. Why can't I use that? Well, this uncertainty is based entirely on the dots, like the position of the, of the points. It is not based on their error bars. It doesn't take the fact that these error bars here are pretty gigantic into account, or that these ones down here are very small. So that's why we need to do these new, these different linear fits. Uh, one piece of advice I found when I was doing this down here that it's very finicky because it's not entirely, I don't think Logger Pro is entirely certain which dot it wants when, I, when I'm trying to move the, uh, the lines. It doesn't seem like it's entirely sure which dot it thinks I'm clicking on. Uh, so I'd be trying to move the blue line and the red line would start moving. This is just kind of happens. Uh, I think it's often best to just um, make sure to move your uh, high and low slope lines as far away from each other as possible when you're, when you're putting them in. And then try to just bring them in once. And sometimes they're just going to be hard to adjust. That's just something you have to work with. Um, but in any case, just kind of eyeballing it is your best bet. Uh, oh, actually... Come to think of it, I think I am missing some error bars by quite a lot. So I'm going to change that to there. And I think that's a little better for my low slope line. Anyhow, so like I said, subtract these two. Subtract these two numbers, divide by two. That's the uncertainty in your slope. And you can use that to find the uncertainty in any of the parameters you might be using in your equations. And that is how you do it in Logger Pro. Uh, I gotta say, I find compared to using a spreadsheet, you always had to do these high and low slope lines, but they're so much easier in Logger Pro. The fact that you can adjust them and you know fine tune them to something that looks like what you want, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot easier. I definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, well, I think that's pretty much it. So uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and uh, thanks for watching.